Hello and welcome to the video where we are talking about Bluetooth qualification. In this part we will deal with the basic terms and testing to understand the structure of Bluetooth qualification process. Notice that all included information is also available on Bluetooth.com. The video has two parts, focused on some basic terms to explain them and to understand their meaning. In the next section we will also talk about device testing. You probably know or suspect what a Bluetooth SIG qualification is. On these first slides I just list and summarize some basic terms and shed light on their meaning. Some basic statements and rules about Bluetooth qualification. All Bluetooth products must be qualified. Product qualification cannot be inherited from your supplier. You must complete the qualification of your product for yourself under your member company's account. There is an option how to qualify a product by adding the product as a new model to one of existing qualification. If it is a new qualification which may require testing to be completed, the launch studio guides you through the process. Bluetooth products must be qualified on or before the date that you begin selling or distribution the product. Details you provide for each Bluetooth product listing must exactly match to the product and marketing materials. Products that haven't completed uh, the Bluetooth qualification process will be subjected to Bluetooth SIG enforcement actions. Bluetooth Core Layer Bluetooth technology is implemented by a combination of software and hardware. This is often referred as the Bluetooth host software and controller hardware. An implementation has a core configuration the minimum required layers for both the host and controller parts, which is considered as complete Bluetooth implementation. Following picture shows the most commonly required layers for Bluetooth products. This picture shows the most commonly required layers. On the left hand side are required layers for BLE. In the middle it is dual mode that includes the Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy. On the right hand side are layers for classic Bluetooth. A definition of product type is the product type express the layers which are supported by the design. Product type is selected during project basic steps in qualification process in Launch Studio. Definitions for following product type are stated in qualification program reference document PRD 2.3 section 2.1. It can be divided into end product, controller subsystem, host subsystem, profile subsystem and component. We will briefly explain them here. End product supports a complete core architecture with the corresponding controller and host core configurations and optionally protocols, services, profiles outside the core specification. Controller subsystem supports the core architecture with corresponding controller core configuration. Controller subsystems must eventually be combined with a complementary host subsystem in order to create a complete Bluetooth solution. Host subsystem supports the core architecture with corresponding host core configuration and optionally protocol services profiles outside the core specification. Host subsystem must be eventually be combined with a complementary controller subsystem in order to create a complete Bluetooth solution. Profile subsystem supports all the mandatory requirements defined in one or more the protocols, service or profile specifications. Component supports all the mandatory requirements for one or more layers in the core specification and or protocol, service or profile specification. It is necessary to say here, a component is intended to be integrated to create a new end product or subsystem. A design that requires or allows for further integration, for example modification of circuitry, PCB layout, in order to create the appropriate design for a product should be qualified as a component. In Bluetooth qualification we met with abbreviations QDID and DID. What is the differences between them? QDID stands for Qualified Design ID 
and it is assigned to new Bluetooth designs that have gone through the qualification with required testing. QDIDs can be referenced by other members when performing their qualification. It only applies to end product and subsystem product type. DID stands for declaration ID and it is identifier assigned to every qualification, regardless of which qualification path they complete. A qualification that has completed the qualification with required testing path will have both a new QDID and DID. Qualifications that complete the qualification with no required testing path will have a new DID and referenced QDID. For example, if a Bluetooth member manufactures a Bluetooth module that can be used in consumer product created by other members, the module manufacturer may qualify their module through the qualification with required testing path as an end product type. They will then obtain a QDID assigned to their module based on completion of the qualification. This can be provided to members that purchase their module. Those members will then be able to qualify their product via the qualification with no required testing path by referencing to the end product QDID provided by manufacturer of the module. There are two paths available in Launch Studio for products qualification. Qualification with required testing and qualification with no required testing. What qualification path to select depends on parts of the Bluetooth design a member will use. For example, on designs already qualified or not, or the product types already qualified. Let's see the first option. Qualification with required testing is intended for members creating a new Bluetooth design or modifying previously qualified Bluetooth design. Is also required for any member using a previously qualified component product type in their qualification. Use this path if you are creating a new design or combination without involving only previously qualified Bluetooth and products or subsystems product types. Modification of previously qualified Bluetooth design by changing the core configuration or functionality. Qualifying a design that uses a previously qualified Bluetooth component product types. Note to the last point, when qualifying with a previously qualified component product type, you may or may not have to perform additional testing based on the assessment date and TCRL. It is abbreviation for test case reference list, version to which the component was qualified. Members can inherit test evidence for conformance test cases if the component was assessed within three years of the listing date of your project and reference that test evidence when completing their test plan. The second option is qualification with no required testing. It's intended for members using previously qualified Bluetooth and product or subsystem product types without any design changes. Use this path if you are using another member's previously qualified Bluetooth and products or subsystems in your product with no changes or additions to the Bluetooth design. Purchasing a Bluetooth product manufactured by a third party and distributing it with your organization's name or logo. It is so called as white labeling. Creating combinations involving only previously qualified Bluetooth and products or subsystems without any design changes. Now we compare these qualification types. Let's start with components. It is intended to be integrated through the qualification process to create a new end product or subsystem product type. This qualification can only be done through the qualification process with required testing in Launch Studio. The component product type gives members the flexibility to make changes to their Bluetooth design and indicate those changes by updates in the implementation conformance statement and still being able to inherit test evidence from the original components assessment. And now we take a look at the end products and subsystems versus component product type. If qualifying a Bluetooth design that will be used by other members in their products, the selected type for the design can have major impacts on a member's ability to qualify. If your Bluetooth product is not intended for further making changes to the design's core functionality, 
It is recommended to qualify it as an end product or subsystem product type. The designs that allow for changes to core functionality should be qualified as a component product type. On the previous slides, we point out some basic facts and we are equipped with terminology. Let's see some advantages and uh, disadvantages of described product types. The following table states certain advantages and disadvantages. It may help members to determine the best choice. So, main differences are these. For end products and subsystems, the customer don't have to test when qualifying and indicate support for expedited errata. On contrary, customer may not uh, make any changes to the core functionality. For component product type, the customer can make the changes to the core functionality. But there are also some limitations in inheritance. It is determined to three years, otherwise there must be reassessment. Customers also need to indicate support for the provide test evidence for expedited errata and resolve any inconsistency in ICS selection phase. The next term is white labeling. What is it? And what are the requirements for usage? It means rebranding another product with your own brand. It happens when a company that manufactures Bluetooth products sells these products to different companies. This company can apply the different brands on the product and OEM can apply their own brand on the products after purchasing. There is a rule that all companies that are purchasing or selling must be members of the Bluetooth SIG and all they have to list this product once for their own brand name. And important is also that qualification cannot be inherited from the supplier. You must complete the qualification of your product under your own member company's account. Adding products to the qualification overview. A single declaration may include multiple products if these products incorporate the same and unmodified qualified design. Products can be added to an existing declaration at no cost as long as the specification version of the design hasn't been withdrawn. When adding new products to the product list in Launch Studio, you will be required to declare that the product incorporates the same design as indicated in the original declaration of compliance, DOC. Now we will discuss some essential terms concerning testing. There are specified such cases that simplifies qualification in Bluetooth. Testing overview. The testing part of the qualification process ensures that a member's Bluetooth product is compliant with the Bluetooth specification, thus will be interoperable with other Bluetooth products. Member will be required to show compliance and interoperability of their design. Member selects the features in the implementation conformance statement as selection step in Launch Studio to determine the test cases. Additional information about the test cases can be found in the most recent test case reference list and the test specification and test suite documents which can be found at Bluetooth test requirements. If a member needs assistance with the testing process, the Bluetooth SIG maintains a list of Bluetooth qualified test facilities and Bluetooth qualification consultants that can assist in performing testing or providing guidance on particular qualification scenarios. We mentioned the CRL document, we briefly introduce it. The test case reference list is a qualification reference for all Bluetooth special interest group members. It is a living document that introduces new test cases, remove test cases and categorizes test cases. Members may only use these document references to qualify their Bluetooth product. All TCRLs will have an available date and an active date. The available date represents when the TCRL is first published by the Bluetooth SIG. The active date represents the date that the TCRL is mandatory for qualification. In fact, it means that a previous TCRL release becomes inactive after the newer TCRL release reaches its active date. 
Depending upon the features supported by a Bluetooth design, test cases from the TCRL will be added to the design's test plan in the testing section of the qualification with required testing path in Launch Studio. Members will then need to perform these tests and provide test evidence to attest that their design conforms to the specification and is interoperable with other Bluetooth designs. We have already met with reassessment. Let's explain what is about. Reassessment is the process of assessing a previously qualified component product type to the latest qualification requirements. This allows to indicate support for any expedited erratum that were introduced in test case reference list released after the component was originally qualified and allows to provide up-to-date test evidence for any of the component listing owners customers who may integrate component into their designs. It is a living document introducing new test cases, removes test cases and categorizes them. Not always is necessary to perform testing. This allows just the inheritance. When integrating a component to create a new end product or subsystem, test evidence from the original component qualification can be referenced in the test plan for the new end product or subsystem. This allows members to make changes to a previously qualified component design and not have to perform testing for test cases unaffected by the member's changes. If the component was qualified, assessed, within three years of the date of the new design being qualified, members can inherit test evidence for conformance test cases from the original qualification. Interoperability test cases evidence cannot be inherited and new test evidence must be provided for these test cases for any new qualifications integrating the component. And we are at the end of the first part. Now we got the knowledge to start the next part on Launch Studio. But that's until next time. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a good time. Goodbye.